Good evening, everyone. I am Heidi Ferguson, and next to me is Fidesta Ramsey. And tonight we have Lindsay Mann, uh, our special guest. And she has been on one time before, and we're happy to have her back. Today is Wednesday, the 17th of November, and we are continuing in this time of time change and darkness and getting used to just being in it um, and the energy of it. So um, yeah, so this is episode 54, season two, episode two, <laughs> as we are into it. So anyway, um, I think I'll start with a little check-in and uh, start by saying that um, it's been, an, it's been, for me kind of a emotionally up and down week. And um, part of that has to do with my, um, today is actually the anniversary of my father's passing 14 years ago. And so what I had shared with Foresta yesterday is that some, and it doesn't necessarily always hit me on the anniversary of his passing, Sometimes it does, sometimes it does not. Sometimes it can just hit me, hit me on a random day, the significance of it and the, the heaviness of it. Um, and yesterday it just kind of came up and I was feeling this kind of wash of grief and sadness and really missing him. And yeah, and then I would say a couple hours later, I felt better. Like I just, you know, grief is one of those things that's ever changing. Can literally change from one moment to the next, sometimes hours, sometimes, sometimes days. Um, it's perpetual, let's just say that. And um, yeah, and so, and the weather too feels that way. You know, here, it, yesterday it was like 45, 40, 45 and windy and cold and today, it was almost 60 and tomorrow it's supposed to be 68. And I'm just like, what's happening? I mean, we all know that global warming's happening, but that too, right? There's just a lot of this kind of roller coaster up and down. And, um, and I wanna say that I'm doing the best that I can in my own humanity, in my own reality, I'm doing the best that I can. And, um, and that's all I can ask. So anyway, yeah, so. Would you like to check in, Ms. Foresta? Oh, I love being here with you both. Um, yeah, thank you. Just seeing you, Heidi, and allowing yourself to be with whatever's coming up feels really healthy to me. It's really honoring. Yeah, I'd, like to, I'd love to hear more about your dad and what he means to you and anything that feels on your heart there. Um, I feel like every part of my life that's really important to me is growing me right now. So like those places that are really important, my, my partnership, my business, um, like purpose and service and all these things, like everything is like on high octane growth, which is incredible. And like, sometimes I just need replenishment and, you know, Heidi, when you were saying grace and, and just kind of giving yourself some allowance there, I'm feeling that too. Cause I can't, the way I would normally like kick ass in my world, some of that emotional bandwidth is elsewhere, right? My emotional tension is elsewhere and I'm choosing it to be but it means like I'm dropping more balls like than I normally would um, and not being able to retain everything. <laughs> so it's been interesting to be like, this is some, this is where I might be in grief and in growth and in transformation. And I, like, I'm not gonna remember like the little things sometimes. And when I'm in those like expansive seismic parts of my growth, um, I guess I'm just telling myself it's okay to drop some balls when that's that's the, gr the growth edge that I'm at because I've asked for the growth. So, 
it's it's sometimes just like very very confronting let's put it that way <laughs> that's it for me how about you lindsay welcome thank you both for having me i'm always so excited to see your faces and to be with you and talk with you you're a couple of my favorite people to speak with so thank you for having me um I always feel so nourished with the two of you. And um, I'm feeling a little bit of an echo of what both of you are saying. Um, and I guess um, the check-in is like, I'm really acknowledging this, like the transition, the transitions, and that there's like layers of transitions and multiple transitions happening at the same time right now, all the time or all the time and that the endings are the beginnings of something. And I'm feeling very a very big chapter closing, but the door is closing gently and it feels final. It feels, and it feels good. And it feels like there's a, a clean slate, a new on the horizon. And there's the discomfort of, you know, the mystery of, of that. And then there's also the the levels of grieving the old those those pangs in your in the top of your stomach or in your heart you know and it's lumped into you know chapters of life and and people in life and um again on multiple different levels and being in this transitional place um it it i feel like you know this is becoming more of an acceptance of being normal, this flux and trying to remain adaptable in the flux of everything. Um, and I think, you know, the transitions become easier, the endings become um, less, I don't know what the word is, um, not necessarily easier, but um, you feel more supported in those transitions when you find people, when you find people who can meet you there and be with you there. And it's um, natural. There's, there's an ease within the support system to help carry you through those transitions. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm speaking a lot about the two, you know, being with the two of you. <laughs> um, and I don't think that my transitions would necessarily be as, um, again, not easy, but I feel like I wouldn't really be able to do them as empowered as I have been. Um, because of the, the bonds that, that we've created here. So that's, that's a thank you. <laughs> that's a thank you. <laughs> and um, and just, just really like acknowledging the, the growth, like how far, how far we've come, how far I've come, if I'm just speaking you know, on behalf of me, like how far I've come. Um, so yes, and to be in circle and held with incredible people means a lot. Wow, that's so, thank you. Thank you for your check-in. Thank you both for your check-in. And, um, and acknowledging something I don't think the three of us have even talked about, which is our, our relationship, like our bond and the way that we've connected and how uh, you use the word natural, I'm going to use the word organic, just it's been a very, um, for me, it's been an easy, I want to say an easy transition. And, and I think for me, the reason it has felt, it has come with a lot of ease is because I have felt safe enough to trust myself in being with the both of you separately and together and also trusting that you are trusting yourselves and then trusting 
the three of us together. I think that has a lot to do with it. Um, yeah, and then the, the importance of, because, you know, Foresta and I talk about this a lot on the podcast, which is friendships and relationships with women and how do we create, and because there's so many people who are yearning for and looking for that. And, um, and you even mentioned consistency. The consistency is so, it is vital. It's not gonna happen unless, unless people continue, unless you and I and the three of us continue to show up for each other and ourselves in the space. It's so important and it does take work and effort and it is completely a thousand percent worth it. Oh, I'm just feeling, I'm feeling so much like joy in my heart, like a warmth of, yeah, that connection. Thank you for naming that, Lindsay. It feels so sweet, um, like the sweetness of friendship and how that can, being held, right? like being held, I just love that. It, it is exactly what allows us to feel like we can, for me, where I can go back out in the world and, you know, do what I want to do, but then have this place where I can just have a soft place to land. Yeah. I feel like one of my favorite quotes, and they're like on the little side of the tea bags, right? Um, was uh, friendship is a sheltering tree. And I, that to me is like the spirit and the ethos that I work, the principle I work under is like, how can my friendship be a sheltering tree? someone just always that like always put me right in like the energy of it you know and then also the being being loved and received and seen all of it so yummy yeah so um so Lindsay we are aware that you have recently been working on and finishing up a book. And so um, I'm curious, I think we're both curious to hear a little bit more about it. If you wanna share something from the book or if you just wanna talk in general about the book, but I'm really curious cause I'm feeling excited about the, cause you shared a little bit with the two of us. And so I'm curious and excited to hear a little bit more about the content of it. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. And Heidi, you're a part of it. <laughs> oh, you're there. There's a little bit of you're in the book. Okay. <laughs> like just a little, a little hint that you're a big part of it. Um, so the book, the book is called Beyond Love, a collection of channeled messages from passed on loved ones. Um, so it's, you know, also timely to talk about this book as Heidi's describing how she felt yesterday on the anniversary of her father's passing and um, the experience of, of our losses and the grief we feel when our loved ones are no longer here in human form um, and how deeply painful that that is. And also this um, innate ability that all of us have to connect with spirit, to connect with past on loved ones. And um, I say it's innate because we are all born able to connect this way, but we grow up kind of being told or fearing it or being told, oh, you're, you're just imagining things or you didn't see that or you didn't hear that. And what's interesting is I, wasn't aware of my connection until um, I started working very closely with Heidi and another mutual friend of ours, Mickey Beloy, where a passed on loved one was coming through while I was working with both Mickey and Heidi. And uh, this passed on loved one was giving me information. So I was channeling, right? So, I was getting all of this support through Mickey and Heidi. And then there was another um, friend, a uh, practitioner that I know 
And this particular loved one came through three different people who did not know that this was happening. Um, and it was very consistent. Um, that time was a pivotal moment in my life where I was being redirected. And that's why the voice had to come through strongly. And this particular bond was nurtured through these channelings, these communications, um, a lot with Heidi and also with Mickey. And um, from there, I started connecting with more and more and more and more and more. And I found out that my apartment where I'm living is uh, like a vortex, like an entrance and an exit. So I'm, and I'm also on the edge of like apartments and a bunch of trees, kind of like wooded area. And sometimes an edge like that is very much a passageway. So my location, my personal openness, um, just the timing just all kind of clicked in. And what, what happened as I was honing in on and practicing connecting and communicating is I was just receiving these deeply profound messages. And a lot of it started with um, journaling. I'm a huge journaler. I've been journaling since I was 14 years old. I've got journals upon journals upon journals. And the messages would come through most easily writing, automatic writing. I'm not thinking it's just pen to paper, but I'll ask a question or I'll say something and then words are just coming through and it's not my words. These are things I would know nothing about. And so, you know, learning the distinction, but after having all these journals, um, I was recognizing that some of like, some of this, it's not, this is not just for me and that this is um, a, a profound source of support that we can all access and yet were not necessarily encouraged. And um, there's a lot of stigma around it, but we need this support. We need all the support we can get. We need support from ourselves in physical form. We need support from, you know, all the different realms that are, that are here to help guide us through these times because they're so chaotic and they be, can become so dark. And especially, you know, with the past year and a half with us being in lockdown and in isolation and feeling so alone, the reality is we're not. We're not alone. We're always supported no matter what. And so in any time where you just felt so devastatingly alone in the world, it's a time to listen a little bit differently. And sometimes those like shutdowns are like a protection time and like a shutdown for you to start listening and connecting to something of a higher support system of higher guidance. So the book, um, it is a, a collection of messages from many past on loved ones. Four of them are my own personal guides. And then um, my team started just bringing other passed on loved ones in. Like I, I, I sat in basically like a trance state for a couple of days and um, listened and I would get a name and a message, a name and a message, a name and a message. And I was, and by the end of it, I was like, oh my God. And they all come from a slightly different angle of what they're talking about, but they're looking at the world right now and they're telling us, you know, what we need to be focusing on. Um, they, they talk about living and dying and the purpose of coming down into human form and the purpose of being spirit and how we all can work together. And it's just, it's, it's beautiful. When it, when it finished up, I was just like, I can't believe what this is. Like it's, it's, a, it's this tiny book um, and it's just packed with these messages. So there's about, there's 20, 20 um, pass on loved ones who contributed to the book. And again, like four of them are mine. And then the rest were just coming through and passing. And they address everything. They address the pandemic. They address um, climate change. They address the, the chaos, the violence, the wars, uh, everything. And just the human condition, you know, just what it is to be alive. And we keep coming down. There, there's a charm to, to being in human form. And, you know, is, there's a lot in there. So... I'm, I'm just, I'm so moved by their messages. I was like, this is not just for me. So I published a little book. <laughs>
<laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so thrilled. That just feels so alive to me, that whole concept and particularly contemporary, um, contemporary talks about that, you know? Sorry, I have a little cough. I'm curious if you're open to some questions, just so I'm curious about in the experience of gathering the information and then writing and all that, I'm curious to know how you, Lindsay Mann, how you were most impacted by the experience. And I know that's, I mean, when I even say those words, I'm like, my God, that sounds like a big question. And I don't know if you need me to break it down a little bit, but just in your own words, your personal experience, how you were impacted by the experience of it. Cause I think it was eight weeks long or something. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I think I was, I've been impacted in a lot of ways and I feel like I'm still feeling the impact of it. Um, the whole thing felt very guided. Like we, 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 we encourage you to write now. We think you should write and you want to write. You know, it's, I would say, hmm, I just loved it. I just loved it. I loved it having them, their presence in my home. And sometimes I would feel my space fill up with people and there's nobody here. And I, I mean, obviously curious, like it's just like a name and then words, a name and then words. So I was just getting these stories, but also like the heartbreak, even on the other side of passed on loved ones trying to connect with the living and because there's a closed, like closed off, not in, it doesn't believe in it, or there's a fear, they can't reach them. And so, it, let me let me start there. A, a big part of it was passed on loved ones coming to me, sad because they want to connect with living loved ones and let them know everything's okay because they're watching their living loved ones suffer, right? And so they're like, I'm trying to get through, and like I wish I could tell them that I'm okay and that I'm with them. So I think. The impact, I would say, I have never felt this amount of love. This, the love is so big and endless. And uh, it, it, it dissipates my fear of living and dying. It helps me to know that, to trust in life's unfolding. There are a lot of messages on about keep going no matter what, let it unfold. The hard stuff can be really devastating and hard and you think that you can't go on, but that is your time to keep pushing through. Those are major growth opportunities. And they're like, just keep going. Don't give up no matter what, like no matter what. That is, an, that is a continuous message throughout the whole thing to just keep going. And things are really hard right now. And I'll just say that, you know, I've struggled with my own, you know, depression and feeling suicidal throughout my life. And my connection to them just being hardcore, no, like you don't leave, don't leave this earth that way. But having them as my cheerleaders through hard times when I get those little dips of just like, oh, the, the world is so ugly. Humanity can be so ugly. I don't resonate with this. I don't want to be here. I, I don't belong here. I want to go home. And they've helped support me through that, that belief system. and you know, I mean, it's like therapy. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. <laughs> like I have, I have, and, and it's from a what the widest lens and the highest perspective, and they can get into everything. They can see things in my brain that I can't see. They can dig into things in my past that I, I mean, it's just, there are no barriers for spirit, but we have physical impact 
And so that is where we are important together because the physical is the impact of existence and spirit can keep things moving and can do magical, incredible things for us to get things flowing. So ah, the impact has been massive. And I'd say, like, I would just say that maybe the, the biggest thing is even the title beyond love, whatever this, whatever this connection is, is, is bigger than any love I have felt in human to human connection. And that's not a joke. <laughs> yeah. So I want to, I want to kind of piggyback on what you said about those that have passed and how many. I'm not going to say everyone that has passed wants to connect, but I know that many spirits that have passed do want to connect. And so I wanted to quickly share my experience, if that's okay. So my, as I mentioned, my father passed 14 years ago today. And in, so that was 07. So in, I think it was around 2012 or 2013. And my partner at the time had been seeing this, um, this psychic medium. This is before I started doing my work. And he said, he's like, I really want you to see her. I'm like, okay. So we went together and, you know, I went with a very open mind. I wasn't nervous. I was just like, whatever happens, happens. And the entire, the entire hour and a half we were there, it was my dad giving information and giving information. And near the end, and I just thought, okay, <laughs> that's good. I can put that aside, right? And then at the end, she said to me, she's like, he wants to connect with you directly. And I literally froze and I was just like, oh my God. And I said, well, I don't want to see him as a ghost. Cause in my mind, I, I pictured him showing up at the foot of my bed as a ghost and I'm like, I don't need to have the shit scared out of me. Like, I don't want to be, I don't want it to be a scary experience. I want it to be a very comfortable and loving and safe experience. And she's like, he doesn't, he, she, he'll, he will show up however you want him to show up. I'm like, okay. And so um, I let it sit for a few days and I was like, okay, I, I, I want you to show up as a blue jay because that was his favorite bird. And he loves it. And it's blue is his favorite color as well as red cardinals. But I really identify my father with a blue jay. And I swear to you, I kid you not, on the fence within, within 24 hours of me saying, okay, I want you to show up as, as a blue jay, there he was. And, and we, would, we would talk. I would just communicate with him and it was really lovely and it was very easy and it became my norm and it still is my norm I don't necessarily see him as a blue jay now I can just kind of call on him and reach out and and ask a question um so for those of you who are listening to this and and want more information about this I'm I I want you to know and Lindsay wants you to know because we both have experienced it that if someone in your life is passing, you are thinking that you want to, you're, you're at least contemplating the thought of getting in touch with someone who's passed, it is possible. It is possible and don't doubt it for a second. And everyone has the ability within themselves to do it. You sure you can pay money and you can have someone do it for you, but you don't have to, you can actually connect with the past yourself. Yeah. I love this conversation. It really makes me happy because I think of um, uh, Yoko Ono when somebody asked her if she missed John Lennon and, and she said, well, when he was alive, we spent most of our time together and now we spend all of our time together. Like it was just, yeah. And I thought, there you go, right? Like that, that's her take on being with her beloved, right? And I know for me, I don't necessarily remember that I can do that often. <laughs> um, it tends to happen when I'm tired and maybe don't have as much 
you know, armor up or whatever. Um, but I totally trust it. Like it's most often Debbie, you know, it's like, I still feel like I get coached by her on the great on high, right? From that realm. And it's almost like hearing her voice. It's almost like seeing her, but it's this, this space that I've learned to trust um, as being consistent and uh, for, my, for my good. That's another piece I want to hold because I think one of you mentioned, you know, people might be scared of it or confused by it or just even just hesitant, right? Um, holding that space of like for the highest good. And um, I remember, I think it was Mickey saying, you know, choose like your, your sane resourced ancestors, right? Those were, those are my words. Actually, you might've used a different word. But essentially, like you choose the wisdom keepers, right? <laughs> Not the ones that were like sketchy. <laughs> Do either of you remember her saying that or how the languaging was? That's how I took it. Yeah, she says it. She says it all the time. Um, yeah, it's like the 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 ancestors who have done the work, your most like benevolent ancestors, your allies, your most benevolent allies and ancestors, and generally the ones, yes, who have who have done the work. <laughs> and everything that that means and and that's true you know because you know you can have you know the the appearances of those who are kind of like trickster and funky whatever but we have we can flex our boundaries and there's an acknowledgement and a respect like and I think Heidi I think you taught me this um that spirit respects boundaries more than people living people did you tell me that? Was that? Yeah. And I found that to be very true. As soon as you say, like, all right, I feel something funky in, funky in here. Get out of here. Like, get out. Like, you're just not welcome. If it's like really kind of like, ee, what is that? <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, you just, you have to flex your boundaries and just speak out loud. Speak out loud. Hey, you got to go. I mean, I, when I first started, <laughs> this was like an ongoing thing at the beginning and I didn't know how to shut it off. I had to like, I was like, Heidi, what? <laughs> um, I had, I had like spooky entities creep into my dreams and literally wake me up in the middle of the night. And I'd be like, what? I'd be like, oh, but then I'd be like, oh, I have the power to be like, stop it. And now it's like, I have my whole team. So I'll just be like, something's in here, get rid of it, <laughs> you know, just like, but you also, it's like, don't give up your power, you know what I mean, we're in physical form, the vibrations, like, you know, you just don't give up your power to it, you know, you can give into the fear, and then it's like, like anything, like anything, if you give up your power, if you don't have your boundaries, you know, you're gonna be in that space, but as soon as you set the boundary, <laughs> Yeah, I would say a lot of people, um, a lot of people come to me initially because they don't know how to handle all the information coming in. They don't know how to turn it off. They don't know what to do with it because it's a lot. It can really be overwhelming. And I'm going to use the word drowning. It almost feels like they're drowning in information and it can feel that way. And as Lindsay said, you you have you the human the in human form are the one in control and you need to be the one to exercise that because if you don't shut it off and you're not intentional about the shutting off they're not going to stop because there is so much information to come through right um and and so a couple of, you know, for, for me, it was really never an issue just because I was like, I'm done. Like I could literally just say, okay, I'm done. And it would stop. And for some people, they've had to use like a, like a visible kind of, um, they've had to use a, a, a visual to kind of do it for themselves. Like, so for instance, when you turn a, fa a faucet on or off, right? Something like that. Like, to the right turns it on to the left turn like if you visualize yourself turning off a faucet think of that as the end of the conversation or the messages um a light switch on off that kind of thing um 
you know, a, there are a lot of things that you can use for that. And if you make it really clear with those you're communicating that that means we're done, they get it. They don't need to be told twice. They're not like, they're not like humans who sometimes don't respect boundaries. They're really not. They really do get it um, because they're on your team. They're here to support and they really want what's best for you. And I will also say there's the, re the reason there's, there is, there can be an inundated amount of information coming through is because they're just as excited to be sharing the information as we are to be getting it. And so um, again, we do have, we as the humans, we have control over that hundred percent. Thanks, Heidi. Oh my God, that feels really good to hear. Just that, that reciprocity, that mutuality of, of joy in that experience. Cause I know what it feels like on this side, but just, I've never heard it articulated that like that's joyful over there too, right? Um, and then the piece that I'm really hearing through this, obviously with my coach ears on is, um, if you're on a spiritual path and you have really squishy boundaries, this is going to invite you to up level the gate, like how you, how you gate energy or input output, right? Can either of you talk about that, whether it's um, applicable to you as an empath, having to learn really how you gate um, what you do and when you do it and how much, you know, you allow in. Curious. It's a big question. Uh, so I will say, I will say that as an entrepreneur, um, Boundaries are something that took a while to fit, to kind of like figure out and and understand what it was that I wanted, as opposed to and and to be really clear in them. So to have everything kind of written in black and white in type, so that if I'm selling a package or if I'm offering some something to someone, they can see very clearly these are Heidi's boundaries, and still. Some people <laughs> have this tendency to, to not like just to not get it or maybe choose to ignore it or they're forgetting all the intricacies that come with it. Right. And so um, and so, you know, in those moments, I have to be really direct. And say, look, we had this understanding and there's this contract that you we both signed to agree to and it's not being met on your end. And so with, with, you know, with me putting my team, um, with me putting boundaries on my team, uh, that has been really helpful and supportive in, I will say the communication piece with humans um, because I can practice. There's really no messing up with my spirit team. Uh, they just, they sort of get it and they're like, okay, you know, she's human. She's going to make mistakes. And, 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 and I'm not also the other thing about this, my spirit team is I'm never tested. Like once I'm like, we're done there, we're done, you know, but with humans, it can be a little squishy, as you said. And so that I look at that as opportunities to, to exercise that muscle. And sometimes it's hard for the other person to hear that, right? And sometimes it's gonna come out a little messy, a little crunchy as we sometimes say. And, um, and if that's the case, I, you know, because there are people that I am intimidated by, even, you know, even sometimes a client that I'm a little uncertain about, right? And I'm not sure where we're gonna go in a session and how this is all gonna pan out. Cause I don't know anything going into this, literally. I really don't know a lot until I'm in it, right? Lindsay, it's just kind of like whatever downloads, downloads. And so, um, and 
in that energy, because of the unknown, I don't know what's going to be coming back at me from the person across, like if I'm doing a Zoom session, right? And, um, and so there are ways that, and I will often say, look, I don't know how this is going to come across and I'm going to do my best to communicate this. And then I say what I need to say, because I feel like that kind of those words in, will set me up more for uh, um, not failure, but what's, what's the opposite of failure? Oh my God, Heidi, I'm losing it. Success. What? Success. Success, yes, in the conversation, right? Like success, like to successfully get my words across to set myself by prefacing what I'm gonna say, because like I said, I don't know what's gonna come out of my mouth. Because if it's a download, and a download can often be misconstrued or misinterpreted or miscommunicated, and it's not intentional. It's just that when I get information, I have to do my best. I, I know how it comes through for me and I get it, but then I have to, it's kind of like, it's kind of like um, a language interpreter. I'm interpreting, I'm getting information, it's coming through. I hear it in my head, I get the information and then I interpret it for the person. Sometimes they really get it clearly and sometimes they don't. And I also have to remember that it, it, they are hearing the information through their own filter, whatever that filter is and whatever else they have going on in their lives. I don't know if that's helpful or not, but that's, um, yeah. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Yeah, I was gonna say the same thing for you, Lindsay, just sort of any of that, because I'm hearing how vast it is, that particular subject, of like how, how one gates and boundaries and does all that stuff. Yeah, do you have anything that adds to that? And I was, I was going to agree that I, I feel like I had a, I've had a similar experience where I've been stronger in flexing my boundaries since connecting with spirit. Like there was, and it, there's a little bit of a, again, like, like a no fear with spirit. It's like, we're trying to figure it out together. And I, I even ask for advice on how to handle certain situations. I'm like, you know, how, you know, how, how should I say this? How should I go about this? And they're always coming for the highest good of, of me um, and the whole situation. So yeah, I, I feel like I have gotten stronger in boundaries um, since connecting with my team. I love it. And I had one other question for you both around um, like how much you have these gifts growing up, like just curious, right? Lindsay, you and I had a convo about just like sometimes young people have the similar content. Like what was your journey? I suppose the best word I can think of in this moment around in being intuitive and you know be beyond that like how you how that's been a part of your world so i feel like as a kid i'm pretty sure my childhood home is haunted um really creepy in the basement like you go down this down the basement to do laundry you want to go up the stairs you want to run up the stairs like you feel something kind of behind you I remember being as being a kid and, and feeling that I was always afraid of the dark as a little kid. Um, I used to have like very like prophetic dreams. I was not associating any of this with connecting with spirit and getting any kind of guidance. Not at all. Um, what's interesting is that, and I, this is the story in the book um, that I add into it to explain that the, the connection I made recently 
showed me that I had this connection all my life. And so what happened was I was guided by my pa- one of my past on loved ones to go to my parents' house, go into the basement, go through a box. And I thought I was going into this box looking for pictures of us when we knew each other. When we got to the box that I thought was the one with the pictures, it had artwork of mine from high school. And I just started looking through it. And as I was looking through it, they, and what it was, it was pictures, it was drawings, and it was sketches of people's faces, portraits, people I didn't know, and people who looked sad and tormented. And as I'm looking at them, I'm like, I remember, you know, I was a very angsty teenager. I remember being alone in my room, and these were like cathartic experiences. And my guide came in and was like, no, you were drawing pictures of people from the other side. And they were, he was just like, you've been doing this your whole life. And then I started thinking about all these other things. And I remember all the times that passed on loved ones, like, sorry, when people in my, you know, friends and family died, I remember just naturally just being like, they're in my home. Like I feel them, they're here. Look at that, look at that. Like that's from them, that's from them. So I would almost like do it and talk about it without recognizing that this is what that is. Like I had no idea that this is what it is. (laughs) So that was, that was my experience. Fascinating, huh? Um, so it's interesting because I think you and I just talked a little bit about this the other day where I had shared with you that my journey, so in my journey, my my spiritual like my spiritual life was the first thing to sh- cuz you know we you can't have one without the other like your emotional intelligence your personal growth and your or your your emotional emotional worth and personal growth and spiritual growth work are all in mesh you cannot have one without the other and so when i was very young you know we were a church going family and for me it wasn't really about doctrine. It wasn't about the building. It wasn't about church. It was this thing that I felt, which I actually felt a lot more in nature. I always felt God in nature. And I don't know that I would have necessarily called it God at the age of four or five, but I felt something. And, um, and I think you both know that I lived in Panama when I was between the ages of four and eight. So My backyard was literally a jungle. And so no fear, like just so naive and no fear. Went out to the jungle, played all the time with my siblings and my neighbors and and just walking through this vast, thick, green, gorgeous, you know, foliage. I was like, what? And I, 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 and I still, to this day, when I walk through the woods or whatever, I still feel it very much in my spirit, in my body, in my heart. And so for me, that was a very um, profound and, and, and memorable time, and which has carried me through my life. And the other thing I remember at a very young age is getting the message from my higher spirit, which was, no matter what, you, were, you will always be okay you'll always be okay. And didn't really know what that meant and didn't know what context that was, you know, what what it all meant. And then in my, I would say in my like 20s to, yeah, 20s to 40s is when I um, really started my emotional growth work time. I've been in therapy forever, it seems like. Very proud to own that. And then in my 40s is when I really started a like deeper personal growth. Like I feel like it kind of melded, like the emotional growth melded into the personal growth. Um, and so just to have that kind of like this lifelong journey of decades of beautiful, hard, not loving it all the time work. Um, I'm so, I, I love how it's all kind of landed together in this really, really beautiful and organic and very 
natural kind of way and how they all just I, 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 when I, when I think of it, I'm like, I see, I can see like an octopus, right? Who's where the legs just kind of like, and then they're, they're all together and then they kind of move apart and all the tentacles. It's so beautiful um, and very fluid and all of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's been my experience. So. Thank you both for sharing. It's so cool to just even be thinking about this you know it's not always top of mind for me but I'd shared it with Lindsay that when I was young and I don't remember this mind you that it like I had the ability to kind of guess on things and know things and have a bit of a direct connection as like a little one with that world and then you know coming to the U.S. and starting for me I think really like the 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 way things were at least at this particular school. Throwing no shade at the school, just like it was a very different, like non-mystical experience, right? It's more like doctrine and rules and whatever. And I had spent four years of my life in this mystical world of like Rumi and Hafiz and music and good food. And all of a sudden it's like people just seemed frigid. And I think my intuition went underground then. You know, because it was like, oh, this is not what this over here is about, kind of, as a kid. Um, and probably really like not until maybe somewhere in my mid-20s did I even begin to think to look there again. Um, and I'm still learning because I feel like kind of like a sorceress. Like I know things and I, I know people and I know instincts and I... I can, I don't know, connect dots in a way that feels, you know, more like dancing than thinking. Um, and like, I'm still one of those people that would love to understand the science of it. Like, you know, like intellectually, there's a part of me that wants to be like, how is this possible that I can talk to Debbie or almost be able to picture somebody's grandfather who I've never met? Like while we're talking about them, like, how is this? Yes, yeah, so the, the scientist in me sometimes goes a little like, ah, I want, I want more info. Yeah, I can, there's a part of me that's like, yeah, I get that. And then, cause I feel like a lot of my trust and my risk comes from my heart. And, and so, that part of me doesn't want to know, you know, I'm like, uh, because I appreciate the mystery of it and the trust factor and the risk part, like just the, the I, and I want to say the wonder and the awe of it. I mean, it's so, ah, oh, I, I don't even have words. It's so great. Um, so I'm okay with the not knowing, like the I was kind gonna of- say, when you put it like that, I'm okay too, because mm. it, it actually is like, yes, let the great mystery be just that. Yeah. 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 So not to cut us off, but we are at the end of our hour, which is, I'm like, God, that just flies by, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. So I have our chat pack question. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. What do you think is the most valuable attribute for any person to have? Gosh, that's really hard because it feels hard to narrow it down to one. Um, I think for me, it's probably going to be soulfulness mm. and whatever that can encompass. Like, uh -huh. How about you ladies? I'm going to, I, I'm going to say integrity. I feel like integrity and honesty are, are enmeshed. And I, to me, I hold both of those very dear. 
and they're so important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's exactly the word that came to me too. Oh. <laughs> I, I was like, this is great. I just, I agree. I think, I think like that's your core, that's your truth, that's your alignment. And if you can stay in your integrity, like you can have nothing but respect for somebody who is standing in their integrity. Like that's just, it's, it, and I think it even complements the soul. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Your alignment, right? It's, yeah. So I think, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Thank you both so much. I'm wondering, do we have time for like even reading a page out of your book? Let's do it this way. Okay. Yeah, we could totally, I'll, I'll find a short one. The way, so the way that I encourage reading the book, like once you get through like the introduction and the explanation of everything, the messages are in the middle. And so I'm kind of like, I like the idea of like bibliomancy, stickomancy, where you just pick a random passage. Okay. So I'm just going to pick a random one and see whose message wants to come through. Okay. Okay. Oh boy. Okay. Do we want a poem or do we want a passage, a message? Whatever you feel called. Okay. I, oh, I like poems. I vote for a poem. Let's do poem. Okay. This is called Bear, Bear Heart <clears throat> from one of my past on loved ones. Let me bear the heavy burden, weighted slowly pressed, crushing your chest. There you go again, making your mountains unjust. Here I am and so will stay, never too far, not for one single day wrapped around, covering over, to breathe you in, I wish, for this so keen, what is unseen could be seen. Bear with me, my one of heavy hearts, sharing in solitude as one in two distant parts. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm really excited to, um, yeah, I can't wait to have yeah. it's it's available on monday the 22nd yeah oh, anywhere yeah. anywhere books are sold um it's actually already up on amazon <laughs> if you want to get it that way um but i just encourage because re like brick and mortar shops are really suffering yeah i encourage like the physical visit to a store um to support brick and mortar just going in and ordering it through them they're print on demand so they're not going to have them in stock so you just go to a shop and just request Beyond Love, a collection of channeled messages from past on loved ones. They'll look it up and then they'll send it. And that's just kind of for the holiday season, as much as we can support our brick and mortar shops. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Lindsay. This was so lovely. Yeah. Thank mm. you so much for having me, as mm. always. <laughs> yeah. And thank you all for joining us, those who have been with us for the hour. Thank you and um, have a good night and we will see you next week. Bye.